Hi, the following case illustrates why a partially opacified maxillary sinus sometimes needs to be explored if it fails medical treatment. This patient is a 40-year-old female who has complained of blood-tinged mucus for over a year. She has no symptoms of sinusitis. She had a CAT scan done previously at another doctor's office, which showed similar findings of this CAT scan that was repeated a year later by myself. The patient had a chest x-ray that was normal. Intranasal exam was negative. At time of surgery, since the patient failed medical treatment, the maxillary sinus was opened through the natural middle meatus. There were uh, white debris and green concretions noted. These concretions were hard to remove and were consistent with fungal sinusitis. At this point, it was noted that the opening of the natural maxillary sinus osteum needed to be widened significantly to get better visualization to remove these concretions. A gyrus shaver placed on 5,000 hertz per second with an oscillating phase using a 4.0 millimeter port was utilized. The osteum was widened. The posterior mucosa was also shaved. The anterior fontanelle was also trimmed. Superiorly, the ostium was widened also. At this point, the ostium was uh, widened, but it appeared that the anterior ethmoid bulla was obstructing. So an anterior to posterior ethmoidectomy was performed, initially starting in the anterior ethmoid inferiorly, moving from inferiorly to superiorly to open the bulla. We start from medial to lateral. This is the safest way to open the ethmoid bulla. So the shaver is removing significant mucoperiosteal thickening, which was not evident on the CAT scan. We want to make the outflow track unobstructed. As we're removing the mucoperiosteal thickening with the shaver, at this point we're moving from medial to lateral, and we can see that we're using the maxillary sinus ostium as a landmark to guide us for the lamina. We can see the mucoperiosteal thickening there, and the shavers used to remove this disease. Now we start to look a little bit more superiorly, and we're removing the mucoperiosteal thickening that appears to be blocking. Inferiorly, there still seems to be some mucoperiosteal thickening and an obstruction of the anterior ethmoid air cells. We can see posteriorly, ethmoid ground lamella was penetrated and opened. This separates the anterior to posterior ethmoid air cells. Posterior ethmoid air cells are larger. Posterior ethmoid air cells appear to be free of any disease. We're now going to work from posterior to anterior on the inferior eth anterior ethmoidal air cells. At this juncture, the ethmoid is felt to be fairly clear and unobstructed, and our attention is going to be turned back to the maxillary ostium and maxillary sinus where the fungus is. Using a curved suction and a zero degree scope still, these concretions are noted. We're palpating along the anterior, inferior, and lateral recess, trying to dislodge any of these concretions. Eventually, we'll need to change to an angled 30 or 70 degree scope to view in to see further. We notice that anteriorly, we can remove part of the anterior fontanelle to enhance our visualization. These concretions are also removed with a J curette. Curved suctions used, again with a zero degree scope. and we're still finding some of the concretions. We have most of it cleared out from view with the zero degree scope. We've now switched to a 30 degree scope, and we're still finding these concretions which are difficult to suction out, and they're difficult to remove with a uh, Takahashi forceps.
Now switch to a 70 degree scope and we can clearly see there are significant concretions along the anterior and lateral recess of the sinus that we just couldn't see with the other angled scopes. So more work is required to remove these concretions. Direct visualization is always the best way to do surgery. We even irrigate to clean out some of the concretions and to loosen them. But despite this, there's still significant concretions. Eventually, though, we do clean out the anterior portion and the lateral recess. Again, good visualizations required with the angled scopes and curved suctions. At this point, we feel confident that uh, the concretions have been removed. The sinus appears clean laterally and anteriorly as best we can see. We've avoided using an inferior antrostomy, which can also be used. At this point, the patient uh, and the procedure is terminated.